Welcome to a brand new segment on my channel. At the beginning of each month, I'm going to be going over my most anticipated movies of that month and let you know what's on my radar. This is something I was looking to do since I first started this channel. I've only been on here since the very end of December, but I was still wrapping my head around YouTube the first few months and then the pandemic hit and with release dates shifting all around and not that many big movies being out there, I had put this on hold indefinitely. But I figured now's a good time to get this off the ground. Even though some release dates are still in flux, we're starting to get a much better sense where the movie industry stands now. A lot of movies got pushed all the way out and we kind of know for the most part what's getting released when for sure. Though like the last few months we're mostly looking at smaller movies for now. Stuff that's on VOD, Netflix, Hulu, whatever. But you know what? This will be good because talking about smaller movies is something I look forward to a lot on this channel. I like to be able to promote smaller independent filmmakers. I think there are plenty of great movies that get overlooked because of small releases or not enough attention given to them. And this will also be a good way to give you an idea of what to expect from me each month. It may not be a definitive list, there may be some surprises along the way depending on if the release dates stick, but at least you'll have a better idea moving forward. If anything on this list is something that catches your eye or is something you're definitely looking forward to, leave a comment and I'll make sure to have reviews for them as quickly as I can. These will just be in order of release dates rather than my personal excitement for them. That way we're not bouncing around from the end of the month to the beginning of the month and back to the end or anything like that. But anyway, here we go. An American Pickle stars Seth Rogen as a man in the 1920s who falls into a vat of pickles and is brined for 100 years, and when he wakes up, he finds out his only living relative is his great-grandson, also played by Seth Rogen, who gets him accustomed to the modern world. Uh... Yeah, this one's going to be interesting. It's definitely a very gimmicky premise, but it looks like from the trailer they're going to play up more of this mix of comedy and family drama with the older Seth Rogen trying to process what's become of his family lineage. So while I did laugh at the trailer, it seems like it's going to take itself somewhat seriously or more seriously than I expected. Seth Rogen can be hit and miss for me, so we'll see what happens. But the screenplay is written by Simon Rich, who was the creator of one of the most underrated shows on FX, Man Seeking Woman. So I have some hope there. It'll be out on HBO Max on the 6th. Boys in the Wood focuses on four boys who take part in a competition in which they have to trek across the highlands in Scotland towards a campsite. However, their journey becomes complicated when they're chased by a mysterious huntsman who's tracking them for sport. This went through the festival circuit last year, opening to critical acclaim actually, and it'll probably receive some comparisons to the similar theme The Hunt from earlier this year. The one trailer I found did a good job of not revealing much, mainly focusing on one scene, but it's listed as an action horror comedy according to IMDb, which should make for a fun genre mashup, so I'm really looking forward to this one. It'll be out on Amazon Prime Video on the 7th. I Used to Go Here stars Gillian Jacobs as an author who's just released a new novel and is invited to speak at her old alma mater by her professor, played by Jermaine Clement, and she finds herself getting involved in the lives of the students currently enrolled in the school. This was originally going to get a premiere at South by Southwest this year until it got cancelled due to the pandemic, but there were a few early reviews, all of which have been very positive. I get the vibe that it's going to be a bit of this cheesy, familiar self-discovery tale, like it seems Gillian Jacobs is still reflecting a lot on a divorce she just went through and she's trying to figure the rest of her life out but I've always enjoyed her especially in Community and Jermaine Clemens also great so this may be a pleasant surprise. It'll be out on VOD on the 7th. She Dies Tomorrow stars Caitlin Scheel as a woman who thinks, you guessed it, she's going to die tomorrow, and it causes her to suffer delusions that rub off on her friends and their lives all spiral out of control. Um... This is another one where I didn't know what to make of it. I watched the trailer and I barely knew what the hell was going on. It didn't give away much, but it looks like a ridiculously trippy experience. It caught my eye though because it's being distributed by Neon, and in terms of independent film companies, they're one of the best. We got movies like Parasite, Palm Springs, Itonia, and a bunch of others from them. So whenever they release a movie, I'm there. This will also be out on VOD on the 7th. The Tax Collector stars Bobby Soto and Shia LaBeouf as a pair of tax collectors for a crime lord whose safety becomes compromised when their boss's rival comes back into town. I'm approaching this one with caution. It's written and directed by David Ayer, who can be very hit and miss. On one hand, he also directed Fury and wrote Training Day, but on the other hand, he also gave a Suicide Squad. And bright. I'm hoping for him to come through on this one, but I'm not totally sold on the trailer to be honest. It seems like it's going to be a super serious movie, but Shia LaBeouf did have something of a career comeback last year with The Peanut Butter Falcon and Honey Boy. He's proven he can be a great actor, and I'm hoping he can maybe keep that momentum up here. So we'll see. This is yet another movie that will see a VOD release on the 7th. Project Power takes place in a world where a drug is created that can give the user different superhero powers for five minutes. When it causes crime to get out of control, an ex-soldier, 
a cop, and a drug dealer all team up to take on the people responsible. With the pandemic leaving us with no summer blockbusters, this, along with the old guard from last month, are about the closest we've gotten to that. Based on the trailer, it looks like it should be fun. When it comes to superhero movies in general though, I don't overhype them because expectations are set so high by everyone walking into them, so I don't want to be disappointed because I built them up to be something they're not. But you have Jamie Foxx and Joseph Gordon-Levitt starring, and they're both enjoyable leads, so it should be some much needed entertainment as the summer winds down. This will be out on Netflix on the 14th. These next three, I'm going to put a little asterisk here for now because these are all set, as it stands, for theatrical releases at the end of the month, and I don't know if that's going to end up happening. Unless these do what Warner Brothers is planning to do with Tenet in September and just open them wherever theaters are open and everyone gets these at different dates, it hasn't been made clear if that's definitely going to be the case or if they're going to push it back or whatever. Personally, I think anything else this year should just either get a VOD release or get pushed out till all the way at the end of the year, the earliest, or just next year. But we'll see. So these may be coming to a theater near you, or they may not. I don't think the theaters near me are opening up anytime soon, so I may be out of luck on these for now myself. Tesla stars Ethan Hawke as Nikola Tesla and chronicles his rivalry with Thomas Edison, played by Kyle MacLachlan, as well as his breakthrough in transmitting electrical power and life. Despite being a biographical drama, this looks like it'll forego something more somber and, no pun intended, take on a more high-energy approach. The rivalry between Tesla and Edison appears to almost be played for laughs at times, judging by the trailer, but even the scenes of Tesla showing off his work appears to be, from a visual standpoint, absolutely stunning and very exciting. And it's only an hour and a half long, so hopefully it won't be bogged down by the usual tropes that come with a biographical movie. If this goes through with the theatrical release, it'll be out on the 21st. The Personal History of David Copperfield stars Dev Patel as the title character, based on the Charles Dickens novel, and it chronicles his time enduring countless struggles after being orphaned from a young age and overcoming them in order to make something of himself. This was originally supposed to be released back in May and was actually on my now somewhat irrelevant most anticipated movies of the year list. And it wasn't because I'm a fan of the original story, which I actually haven't even read, but because I'm a big fan of Armando Iannucci, who wrote and directed the film. His movies In the Loop and The Death of Stalin are both hilarious, as well as his show The Thick of It. He ventures into more family-friendly territory this time around, but it looks like this will still retain his usual wit and charm, so I have high hopes for this one. And finally... <sighs> The New Mutants, the last movie in the Fox X-Men franchise, focuses on five young mutants who are held in a secret facility against their will and move to save themselves as they discover their new powers. I'm convinced this movie's cursed. This has gone through five different release dates. You know when this was originally supposed to be released? Do you remember that? April 2018. That's just wild. I was excited for this back in 2018. It's going for a horror movie approach, which I can appreciate. But I mean, at this point, I don't even know anymore. After Apocalypse and Dark Phoenix, I kind of just want this series to be put to rest. Especially since X-Men will become part of the MCU anyway at some point or another soon. So let's just get to that. If all goes according to plan, we'll see this on the 28th. And that's my list. We'll see if the release dates end up sticking, especially for those last three. I'm going to try my best to review all of them. The first five in particular are all getting released in the first week of the month, so it may be a bit to get through all of them during opening weekend, especially because there are still a few more movies from earlier this year I want to talk about as well, so we'll see what ends up happening. But which of these are you looking forward to? Is there anything I left off? Let me know in the comments below so I make sure not to miss anything. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it. And for more movie reviews and film discussion, please make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay updated. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll catch you next time.